Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Glenn Cairns and today in this video I will be showing you how to shoot a hyperlapse on the DJI Mini 3 Pro and how to edit it in Lightroom and Final Cut Pro. Stay tuned. So, the first thing you want to do is obviously lift your drone up like I want to do here. Make sure all your camera settings are in a manual setting. So, right now you can see it's in auto and I'm just waiting to go into hyperlapse mode, but there you are, I'm in pro now. So, you want to make sure that you've got a good shutter speed. Unfortunately, I don't have my ND filters yet, so there won't be a lot of motion blur. But normally, uh, 1 over 4th is, is good for uh, motion blur and all that. And, you want to keep, obviously keep your ISO as low as you can, so in this one I've got it at 100. If it was lower light, I would maybe bump up to 400 ISO, depending. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into position. So again, I'm just adjusting my uh, shutter speed here, which is fine. I'm going to go into a hyperlapse. So you can see here you've got free circle, course lock and waypoint. Waypoint is probably one of the coolest ones where you can control the actual gimbal. But on this one, I'm just going to do a circle one. Now, one bit of advice is that I would definitely make sure that I've got 100% battery on me. In this case, I've only got 37%. And um, when I took off, I only had 40, and it was very windy, as you can see the, the red banner uh, <laughs> going mental at the top there, because it was very windy, and uh, it doesn't really matter with this um, setting that I'm gonna do. Like, it's not gonna go wavy in the video at the end. So that's me. I've tracked uh, where I'm wanting to to take the shot, obviously on the lighthouse, it's um, just try to find its um, positioning, you just let it do that. So, in this video I've chose 125 uh, pictures, which would be a 5 second video clip on a 25 frame per second timeline. Unfortunately I only managed to get up to <laughs> about 70, 78 photos, which is about a 3 second video. Not ideal, but again, this, uh, <laughs> my fly more combo could not come quick enough. Uh, so I just had to make do with this. So what I'm doing here is I've just chosen circle. I think I decided to go clockwise or anti-clockwise. So it just does a, a wee arc around. So I'm just gonna let the photos take its course and then just, yeah, let's see how it goes. And again, you must be taken in raw because we're gonna be taking this in the Lightroom where you can see later on. So let's see how that looks. Okay, so the panic button is finally hit in at 3 minutes left and 15% on a very windy Aberdeen. So I've uh, stopped the time lapse at I think 78 photos. I'm taking her home. I can't risk it. It's <laughs> it's too risky. I'm not going to waste a drone just for a hyperlapse. I'm going to land and take it, everything into Lightroom. So let's try that one now. So here we are in Lightroom. So let's get our photos imported. So. Um, go and file, add photos. So I've already uploaded everything into my folder here. So I'm gonna go on that one. This is the hyperlapse folder that I normally saves in. So yes, it's this one. It took 78 photos. I'm just gonna go down to the very bottom. Or alternatively, you can just import the entire folder. So review for import. So here we go. That's them all here, DNG files, a raw file, so yeah, that's fine, add 78 photos. And I'm just going to let that import. So while that's importing, I'm going to um, quickly edit this photo here. So you're going to edit one, then you're going to paste all your settings on the next one, so let's have a look. Um, I sometimes like to go on auto just to see how it, it turns out, then just kind of manipulate from here, but um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just going to do it from scratch. So I'm going to bring the highlights all the way down. Uh, I can see from up here that the histogram that it's not bright enough. So I'm going to bring it up here, add a bit of contrast in here. Uh, I think there's maybe a bit too white in there. I want to see a bit more of the sky. Um, you almost get like a vignette sort of look here, but I think that's just from the clouds. So yeah, I'm not too bothered about that. Um, I'm going to add saturation to this photo. I'm going to manipulate the colours here a bit, so I quite like it when it looks a little bit greeny here, just to give it a bit more of a nice look to it, a bit of, I'll probably add a bit of saturation in there, um, a bit of luminance, there's not a lot of colours in here, so we can't manipulate it that much, um, I, th I think that looks a bit unrealistic there, so I'm probably going to uh, bring that down just a touch, I think that's maybe better. 
Uh, that's worse, is it? Yeah, that's fine, I'm happy with that. So, um, I'm gonna add a bit of clarity, not too much, otherwise it just looks stupid. So, I'm gonna do that. Let's add the bit of dehaze. Nah, I'll leave that. If you try to add a vignette, I, I'm not, I might do a negative or well, a plus. Like, obviously, if you add a vignette, it does that, it looks a bit silly, but <clears throat> for this, I might just add a tiny bit of it. The only thing is that it might look a bit inconsistent, so I'm just going to leave it out, actually. Um, I'm going to see if there's any noise in the picture, in the sky. There's a bit, so maybe just add a bit of noise reduction in there. Uh, a little bit of sharpening, so... Yeah, I, I think I'm fairly happy with that. Um, there's not really too much I can do. I'll, you know, I'll maybe bring up the shadows just a touch as well. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. So... I'm going to go on G, that brings me back to the grid, and then I'm going to go on Command, Shift, C, which copies that, copies everything, so yep, and then I'm going to go on Command, A, which selects everything, and I'm going to go on Command, Shift, and V, which pastes all your settings, as you can see here, so that's changing all the colours, brightening it up from the shadows and that, so... <coughs> I know in the last picture the sun is out on it, so let's have a look here. So that was the first one, and I know the clouds did move. Okay, here we go, so it's going to be about here. Um, and I would probably say it's a bit too bright, so if I was to bring that to about 0.72, yeah. I think that maybe does it, so I'm going to go on Control Z, go on G. I'm going to go back to the photo, I'm going to bring that down to deselect all that so I think I am going to bring that down to about 7 8 and yes I do think that is too dark but what I'm going to do is I'm going to recover that with key frames on my timeline on Final Cut Pro so we're going to bear that in mind so I'm going to go on G again okay I'm going to select that command shift C it's good to know all your shortcuts um, and then command A which selects them all and command shift V which pastes them all again so as you can see it's making it darker but I want to recover the the highlights. I could do a keyframe in Final Cut Pro but I wouldn't be editing the raw file. I would just be recording a, a video which you're going to see. I know that sounds confusing so let's have a look here. Yeah I mean I would maybe say it looks a bit yellow but um, is there anything I can do about that actually? So. Make a bit more purple. Nah, you know, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm happy with that. So let's go in G and then uh, Command A. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in File, Export. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do quality 100%, just gonna do a JPEG. I'm not gonna do anything fancy here. Dimensions, full size. <coughs> just so I know it's the right one, I'm gonna call it Hyperlapse, start number at one. Okay, cool. So, and each file size is going to be 8.6 megabytes. I think the last one's probably going to be different because there's more information going on in there. All right. Yep, 10.2. There we go. But um, yeah. So, command A just to. <coughs> okay. <so coughs> I'm going to export them all here. So, I'm just going to let them export. So, what I'm going to do now, while that is exporting. I'm going to go into Final Cut Pro, so that was, here you go. <laughs> I'm going to go in Project, I'm going to call this um, Hyperlapse at C. I'm going to make it 4K, perfect, 25 frames, cool. So, how's the exporting doing? We're just going to leave that to export, okay? So once that has exported, we go into Final Cut Pro. Uh, I'm going to go in Finder, I'm going to, we're going to go and see Hyperlapse and I'm going to go and click the first button, I'm going to select them all and I'm going to drag and drop them on the timeline. So the first thing that you're going to notice is that each photo is about five seconds long. This works for Premiere as well, the commands are going to be a little bit different but 
this should work the same, okay? So yeah, each photo is four seconds long. So I'm gonna go on Command A, select all the photos, and then I'm gonna go on Control D, and then I'm gonna click on one, and that'll make every photo one second long, okay? So, so that, so that's brought them on the timeline, about one second's long, but let it buffer. So, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna turn this into a video, kind of. So we're gonna put it in a compound clip. Yeah, I'm just gonna call it that. So, that's now a video, okay? <clears throat> that's good. Uh, we're gonna let that render, just so I can show you how it looks. So, if we play it back, let's see how it looks. Yeah, it looks okay, it's a bit buffery in that, it's jumpy, but that's what we're gonna do in the next bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna export this video, hyperlapse at C, we want that 4K. Actually, it's not that big at all, it's only 19.6 megabytes, so, yep, so let's um, let's just, uh, render that off. So I'm gonna save that on my download, so, yep, we're just gonna let that export. Very quick to export, so I'm gonna delete this now, I don't need it. I'm gonna go back into Finder, and then I'm gonna go into my downloads. I'm gonna drag and drop that onto here. So now I can stabilize it. That's the whole reason why you export that, because you can't stabilize a compound clip. So here it is, here's my video. Like I said before, it's a bit jumpy, so we need to try and fix that. So how are we gonna do that? So I'm gonna click on it, stabilize, let it stabilize, and then we'll need to change one setting. So that's just gonna stabilize just now. So we're gonna go in method and we're gonna put on inertia cam. So we're gonna do that. I think that does the best job of it. Um, whereas you kind of get that jelly look on the other settings. Um, so here's how that looks on here. Well, we did not mean that. Here's how it looks. A lot stable, a lot better, 100%. I would definitely recommend that you use this setting here for any hyperlapse that you do. We gotta bear in mind, this is a very windy day, like gusts were bad. And you can see it in the waves here that they were blustering so yeah I think that's that's the best one we're gonna get so you're gonna notice the edges here are quite uh, wobbly and it was a 4 by 3 shoot so we're gonna scale that in so we're gonna watch it bounce to make sure that you don't see any lines coming in perfect I'm probably gonna scale it up as well just to yeah get a nice ratio there I don't know why it keeps doing that how does that look yeah really happy with that cool um, like I said at the start, so I'm gonna go into here. Um, I'm gonna manipulate just a bit, okay. Let's open our, just to do a, a one last check of our color correction, because that is important. So I'm gonna pick up to here. I'm gonna bring it down just a smidge. I'm gonna bring my, my mid tones down a bit, just to add a bit of color in there. So. I've done a keyframe for here, so let's play that back and see, keep an eye on this. So that's the lighthouse in the middle here, right? It's just gone over a hundred, so I'm gonna bring that back just to the point where it does go overexposed. So here we go, so it's about here. So about here, so I'm gonna punch in my keyframe here and then I'm just gonna go frame by frame until it goes up, so there we go. That's it just broken the 100 bit here, so I'm gonna put that in here. I'm gonna bring that down just so it's below, so it is exposed. It's still quite bleached out, but it's probably the best that we're gonna get. I probably could do a better job in Lightroom, but I, I, I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna go with that. So here's how that looks. Not bad, okay? So that's just done. Now I'm gonna export this and uh, yeah, Hyperlapse at C, I'm going to call this final. And there you have your hyperlapse from your DJI Mini Pro. I hope this video was uh, valuable to you. And if you are going to use this video, please let me know. And if it was useful to you, um, please leave your um, comments in the comment section. Please like and subscribe. And thanks again for your support for the channel. Stay tuned for the next video.